you know, the Vikings, you know, the vision people have of them is when you're looking at the horizon of the ocean. And when you look at the horizon of the ocean, it's like looking at the waters meeting. The ocean waters appear to meet the waters of the sky. And when the Vikings would attack, you'd be standing on the shore and you'd see their armada appearing on the horizon and they had dragon's heads on, on their boats. So you would see the dragon, the dragons coming forth, coming down from the heavens and the people would run in fear because it was like the Vikings are coming. Run! Yeah, and I will tell you, I think the Vikings knew absolutely what they were projecting, you know, as their boats came on shore. But it's that same reflection of the heavens meeting the earth and something coming on down. And, you know, in Revelations, there's the dragon, you know. Vikings have this really weird relationship, you know, uh, th their mythology or pagan religion matches up surprisingly well with Christianity or Jesus and what was going on, uh, you know, in the land of Israel. You know, Christians have heaven, the Vikings have Asgard, uh, the Christians have a rainbow. Jesus uh, said, I will give you the rainbow as a sign that I'll never flood the earth. Well, the Vikings had the rainbow bridge, which got you over to uh, Asgard. You know, in Christianity, there is our Father who art in heaven. Well, the Vikings have Odin, the All-Father. You know, in Christianity, there's the Holy Spirit or the Mother Spirit. In the Vikings, they had the uh, Freya, who's the queen of the dead. You know, then you got Jesus, and he's associated with thunder and lightning. He says, when I return, there'll be thunder and lightning. And, he, you know, some people think he has a rod of iron. And then you have Thor, who's blonde, and he has a, a hammer, Mnolger. <laughs> uh, but he's associated with uh, thunder and lightning. You know, uh, Christianity, you got Lucifer over with the Vikings. You got Loki, who's kind of like a hybrid. You know, he's not a full-on uh, Asgardian, which would be kind of like the fallen sons of God creating some kind of hybrid, whatever. But, you know, in Christianity, you got a angels, Michael, Gabriel, Thor had his fighting buddies. I'm trying to think of what the heck their names were. You know, there, there's the golden-haired Sif, who represents Venus, and uh, Sif means to marry. But Sif had golden hair, even though in the comic books they always had her with dark hair. In, in Viking lore, she had golden hair. You know, uh, Jesus had disciples. Uh, the Vikings had uh, crew members on their ship. Uh, you know, Christianity is a brotherhood. You know, love that brother. Well, the Vikings are a brotherhood, you know, under the Viking laws. It wasn't so much racial. Guess what? You didn't have to have blonde hair and blue eyed. The Vikings, if you would just live the Viking lifestyle, you could be one of them as well. Everything we're looking at, my friends, you know, it's a big mystery, man, because it's about the mirror and reflective images, what's real and what's not real, man. So you got to look real hard. I ended, you know, talking to you out of 2 Corinthians, which was the Apostle Paul, and he, you know, uh, 2 Corinthians 11 verse 2, he says, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband. I have given you as a daughter to Christ, that I may present you as a chaste version. But then he says in Corinthians 11, verse 3, But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is Christ. And there we go. You know, the circle is complete, the Alpha and the Omega. We're at the end times. It goes right back to the beginning of times in the garden. And it says, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 4, the fours, For if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. For I suppose I was not a wit behind the very chiefest apostles, you know, like maybe I'm not the smartest guy, and I'd be rough in speech and knowledge, but we have been thoroughly made manifest among you in all things. And, uh, you know, it just kind of goes to say that Satan comes as an, an angel of light, you know. Mirror images, you gotta be careful, and uh, the images look like one another. So there's these virgins, right? The Garden of Eden, Adam was a lonely boy, so this Lord gave Adam a U, an E W E, a female lamb. You know, Eve, E W E V E, and in the Book of Enoch, it's it's Eva, which is uh, mother death, uh, the mother of death. Whereas Adam called her the mother of all the living. But a lord gave Adam a woman, and he immediately started lording over her. Uh, from Dan to Beersheba, where they're all of one accord. And I'll tell you what, my friends, that's a little bit of what's going on, too, is people are going to be speaking of one mind, of one accord. You will be witness to amazing things like through the Internet, through whatever. People will be walking in lockstep. And I'll tell you what... 
on the light side, you know, the daughters of Dan, you know, Vikings, Vikings are adventurers, explorers. We don't get locked into the box. We are not afraid to go out of the box. But they want to lock you in the box. So anyway, uh, Abraham, from Dan to Beersheba, you know, uh, Beersheba was the well of the sevenfold oath. And Abraham gave seven ewe lambs to Abimelech. And it's all these sevens and sevens and virgins. And there's the 70 virgins, like in, in, in Islam. They, it's actually 72 virgin, virgins that if you die, you know, to the glory of Allah, you'll be given 72 vir, virgins in paradise. And Paul's sitting here talking about presenting us as a virgin. You know, on the light side, you know, walking with God, a virgin that isn't actually a virgin, a female. A virgin is a state of mind because you have not been corrupted in any way. That doesn't mean you have never had sex. It just means whatever sex you had, it was divine sex and there was no sin in it, you know. But this being defiled by women, it's not that having sex with a woman defiles you. It's more representative of a state of mind. Being defiled by a woman means that you have let your mind be polluted with carnal 3D sex one way or the other, man. You know, that it is now a spirit that is afflicting you and putting you into bondage. You have been defiled. And, you know, they love to use that terminology, the whore. You know, because on the dark side, once it's the whore, you know, you can stone the whore, you know. Of course, Jesus didn't stone the whore. You know, Mount Hermon is at the uh, 33 by 33 uh, latitude and longitude. You know, virgin, if you do a word search in the Blue Bible, it comes up 33 times in 33 verses. That's the word virgin, singular. Then if you do it by virgins, it comes up 22 times in 22 verses. So there you go, the 33 and the 22. You know, and like I said, there's this hidden code of the eights and the fours and uh, the virgins within uh, the Bible. But it was very important to the children of Israel to get virgins for the tribe of Dan so they wouldn't be cut off. Now what we see is in uh, Revelations 7, the sevens again, there is this Lord. And, uh, you know, you need to kind of put things into perspective. But in Revelations 6, basically... Uh, the stars fall from the sky, the sun is darkened, but the stars fall, you know, which is kind of like Satan or something dark uh, coming to earth. But in Revelation 6, if you look at the very ending of it, right, it says, uh, I beheld, and, and he that opened the sixth seal, and that's kind of where we are, if you watch Nainani in his video, the opening of the sixth seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth. This is Revelation 6.12. And then 6.13, the stars of heaven fell to earth as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she's shooken by a mighty wind, the Spirit of God. And the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of the way. It was made smooth. And, and uh, the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondsman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us, hide us. So, you know, this is that earth becoming smooth, God's spirit blowing across the waters and says, for the great day of wrath is come and who should be able to stand? So then in Revelation 7, immediately after that, he sees four angels that are holding back the four winds that are uh, going to bring massive destruction. And uh, then it says Revelation 7, 2. And 7 times 2 is 14. And this is important, but... I saw another angel ascending out of the east. Ascending is going up. You know, so I'm saying that's Satan was cast down in Revelation 6, the stars that fell. Now he's trying to rise up and ascend Zion, where he says, I will rise up, you know, and be like the Most High. So Revelation 7, 2 is an angel ascending out of the east. I'm taking that as a wicked, evil angel, Satan, having the seal of the living God. And see, now that's Satan living on earth. He's been cast down. That's his seal. And you'll see this seal is, I think, in Revelations 12, where... The Antichrist seals everybody that you can't buy or sell goods unless you have the mark on your forehead or on your hand. That's the exact same seal here that this guy has coming up out of the east. And he cries to the four angels who were given the power to hurt the earth. He says, don't hurt the earth or the sea or the trees. Why? Because he's now locked into the 3D carnal plane of existence. So he doesn't want it destroyed. And he says, until... Uh, 
until we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And then you have these 12 tribes of 12,000 for 144,000 that are sealed. And Dan and Ephraim are not amongst them. They are cut off. And I'm going to tell you, that just might be a good thing. Because these people being sealed, who is this God, the living God that they're being sealed for? Now, right after it's over that they're sealed, it talks about the multitude. And the throne of the Lamb, which is Jesus Christ, which I say, you know, like the ark, all them animals were people. It wasn't just eight people, you know. So, uh, you know, he's looking at the multitude right after the last tribe, Revelation 7, 9. I beheld a great multitude, which no man could number, all wearing white, white robes, under, you know, under by the throne, worshiping God. That's not the same God that those 144,000 people from the tribes are, are worshiping. Now, in Revelations 14, everybody assumes that this 144,000 that is in Revelations 7 is the same uh, 144,000 people. But I got news for you, my friends. I don't think they are. Because uh, in Revelations 14, he says, I look and a lamb stood on Mount Zion and 144,000 having his father's name written on their foreheads. And see... They're not selected out of a tribe. There's no mention of Israel here. It's the Lamb and His throne. Whereas in Revelation 7, there's no mention of the Lamb and His throne. It's this angel ray ascending up from the east. And these 144,000, they're, they're virgins. And in Revelation 7, no mention of anybody being a virgin. And when you look at the history of what went on here of the tribe of Benjamin taking 400 virgins and time and time again women and virgins being abused. You know, the 144,000 that are sealed in Revelation 7, I don't think you want to be amongst their number, my friends. So just ponder that for a minute. You know, the mysteries of God is that it's usually 180 degrees out from what you would think. So, you know, I, I'm sorry if you, if you feel like you're Jewish and this chaps your ass because I'm painting a, a negative light on the, the 144,000 chosen in Revelation 7. But, uh, you know, just like in most cultures, even in Israel, their Messiah had to be a mighty man, a Lord that came down and ruled everybody by fear, you know, that sent you running. You know, that's why when Jesus showed up as the exact opposite, as a servant, kind of in the female spirit manifestation of being humbled and bowed down, you know, they wouldn't accept it, you know. And likewise, in this 3D carnal world that we live in, where the male ego pride driven spirit dominates where it lords and where it's sexual prowess and the amount of children you can manifest is how you measure your house and your pyramid of power and where you know to our last dying breath it's like take viagra and just keep on having sex you know and bringing forth children of iniquity you know the, the mystery of god is the exact opposite jesus talks about the eunuch you know, the guy that never has sex. And he says, even if you're a eunuch, don't say that you're a dry seed. You know, which in the carnal 3D thinking of man, that's impossible. Because if you never have sex, you're a dry seed. You know, and they would probably laugh and mock at you. 33s, the angel rising in the east. Uh, it talks about the sign of circumcision. So this angel, to me, has a connection to the Lord that told the Israelites to get circumcised, which would be the circle, you know, cutting off the foreskin. But the word uh, is used 16 times in 16 uh, verses, you know, so there's the 44, the carnal Lord of the earth, you know. Matthew 21, 42, you know, the stone that the builders reject is the head cornerstone. You know, all the pyramids all around the world are more symbolic of the 3D carnal Lord being cast down and then rising up in power. Because that's what happened in prior ages, man, when the earth went dark. You know, man building his own house, man building his own pyramid. And that's what all them pyramids all around the earth point to. The blondness points to the fact that it was all divided up and boxed up, which allowed the fallen angels and men to be taught the art of war and to perfect the art of war. And that's kind of where we're at. And God help us if we have World War III. Art of war. Why is it called the art of war? I will tell you why, my friends. Because, you know, even though, you know, there's a sad truth that part of man's evil nature is to hate and to kill another man. 
the way you get a man to kill a man is you got to paint a picture, my friends. And there is several ways, several pictures that can be painted. And these pictures are distortions that produce hate. So, uh, basically it is by dividing up, rather than having one picture of what mankind should be, you start painting separate pictures. And so you have one picture, which is religion, and you have another picture, which is race, and you have another picture, which is called nationalism or countries. But what you do is you paint a picture for the masses, man. And you tell them this is why it's okay to kill a man. And you know, uh, one of the commandments, the Ten Commandments, you know, the Lord that gave us those Ten Commandments was, Thou shalt not kill. And yet, mankind finds a reason to kill a man. You know, like, I'm killing a man because God, God's on my side, not on your side. You know, religion, my God versus your God. You know, man will kill another man because it's like, hey, my country, I'm fighting for my country, you know, the United States against whoever, uh, Nazi Germany against the rest of the world, Russia against uh, Ukraine. And of course, a reason a man would kill another man is, hey, you're different than me, man. You know, I'm blonde-haired and blue-eyed, you're dark-skinned and brown-eyed, or you're yellow-skinned and dark-haired, or you're red-skinned and dark-haired, or whatever it is, you're just not like me, so you're the enemy, you're they. The truth is going to pour forth, you know, the spring, the well in the dry places. Can you handle the truth? The shadow people cannot handle the truth, man. The daughters of Dan are truth-tellers. You know, Jesus says, seek and you will find. That is the mark of a Viking, a brotherhood, a love, a adventurous spirit, a willingness to seek the truth and to not turn back, to be willing to crash the distant shore of a new land, you know, where these pyramids of power and these houses that were erected, houses of cards, you know, by the spirit of man or by a dark lord, you know, Satan, Lucifer, whatever, they're all going to fall. They're all going to melt away, my friends. That is what we're on. Look at today. We just had an 8.2 earthquake down in Chile, man. You know, my heart goes out to all those people down there. But what you see here on earth, you know, somehow it is a manifestation of all the ending age, the beginning age, the synchronicity. And we have a singularity that is about to unfold, my friends. So make sure that you're a daughter of Dan, you know.